Hello, math faculty at Jackson College and anybody else at Jackson College who might be watching or anybody in the wider world who's watching. I'm going to show you in this video how to set up big blue button in our JetNet online classes so that we can use them. Um, in particular, I'm making this in the post-COVID um, quarantine time, but technically this could be used anytime um, for classes. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on JetNet online classes. Um, I've already logged in, so I shouldn't need to log in again. Yeah, it knows that it's me. Sorry. So it, it, will, it will make you use your username and password to log in, but I've already logged in. So I'm going to go into one of my classes. I'm going to pick Math 133, Section 01. And up here at the top, you can see there's this little red icon. Um, and then there's it'll be a green in a second one because I just clicked on it. So if it's green, it means you are viewing it as a student would more or less. Um, the editing is off, so you can't you don't have any power over here. But if I click on that and it turns editing on, it means I have power. I am the instructor. Let me add things. And you can see I've already made this video once and it, and then it got eaten by my computer, so I'm making it again. So I went in here and I clicked. It said topic one originally, so I clicked on the little edit topic name. And I typed um, first week post COVID-19, um, although this is technically 2020, but that's not the name of the virus. Um, and then I gave it the date. I wanted to, to date my week so that way students know what they're doing. And so then this will be, and then I press enter. And then it did that. And then I added an activity or resource. So I already added session number one and then my computer ate it. So I'm gonna add again, so I'm gonna add another activity. So I'll click on it, it's the same, same theory. So I'm gonna click on big blue button right there. And then I'm going to scroll down and say add. And we wait for a second. Okay. So now I'm going to give this a name. So this is BBB session two. Whoop. Session two in week one, which is still, um, th this will be on 325. So this will be my second session. I don't want to send a notification. That would send every, all the students an email letting them know that it's built, which I don't need them to know that. Um, a lot of these settings we're not going to bother with. You can see that you're listed as the moderator. It'll be whoever you are as the teacher. So um, it's saying me because this is my class. Um, and then let's see, recording settings. Don't worry about that. Activity room settings. If you want to type a welcome message, um, you're welcome to. I like this bit, waiting for the moderator. So I can say, welcome to our BBB session, you know, or whatever. Um, you can say whatever you like there. Um, waiting for moderator means that they cannot get into the class unless the instructor is in the class, which I like. I don't want them all getting in there until I'm in there, um, just in case I'm a few minutes late or something. I don't want them messing around in there. Um, then schedule for session. I'm actually not going to bother. That would limit the time that students can get in. But if they're limited to when I'm in there anyway, then it won't make any difference. Um, and then all the rest of the stuff you can basically just ignore. There's more advanced stuff in here. But for a simple quick BBB session, you don't need all that. So give it a nice title, something that makes sense. If you want to add a welcome message, you, you can. You don't have to, um, I don't believe. And then I'm just going to save and return to the class. And then you can see it. And I, I wasn't consistent in my naming, so I'm going to um, change this. I'd like it to be a little bit consistent. So I'm going to take it. This one's session one, and this is week one. There, that makes more sense. And then I'm just going to press enter when I'm finished. And there we go. Then they match. Oh, except for the parentheses. All right, so then I'm going to get into this BBB session and show you how it works. Give me one second. There we go just to keep a nice um, common naming convention. All right, so now what does a BBB session look like? All right, so I click in there, and then it's gonna allow me, it's gonna take it a second, and it's gonna say your conference room is ready, you can join the session now, so I click join session. And it's gonna take it a second. And there it is. All right, so now the first thing it's asking you is how do you want to join? And as the instructor, it's super important that students be able to hear you. So you're going to want to join with a microphone, which means you're going to need to have a microphone. Now, most laptops have a microphone in them, um, especially if they're from the college. 
Um, otherwise, you can buy a microphone headset. That's what I did. Um, you can get pretty cheap ones for like 40 bucks. Um, and I have headsets, so it's got um, earphones and it has a microphone piece attached. And mine is actually wired. It, it's a USB one, so it wires right into my um, laptop. If you have troubles or you need a headset, let me know and I can see if I can find you one. Um, it might not be the best one, but I can see what I can find. All right, so I'm gonna click with a microphone and then it's gonna ask me, do, can am I allowed to use this microphone? So I'm gonna say, yep, you're allowed to use the microphone. And first thing it's gonna do is an echo test and I can hear this weird sound thing, so I'm gonna click yes. And it tells me that I'm the only person in this conference and there we have it. And there um, is saying, welcome to our big blue button session, see? There's a um, my welcome message. This session may be recorded. It's important that students know that you can record up here with the start recording button. I like to do it when there's a good question. I click on record and I rephrase the question and say, that was a good question. Here's the question and then here's my response. And then you can stop recording. And then you can post the videos. It'll actually make a video of the entire session that you can access and post into your JetNet class so that any of the students that couldn't make the session could actually hear your responses and the students' questions and so on. Now, not every student that um, is in your class, of course, has access to a computer, say, all the time. So they can actually dial in with a phone number. They can use this phone number with this as the conference PIN number, and you can let them know that. So what I do, oh, and then I also click on invite a guest to join meeting. So I click on that. And it's going to be this big URL. So what I do is I copy and paste this in to an email for students or and um, I actually text it to them and remind because I have my whole class in remind. And I also email it to them and say, hey, everybody, it's time for our session. Here's how to get in. And they can actually phone call in. I believe that link takes them to that and lets them either phone in or they can click on it and get in. And then there'll be a whole list of student names and phone numbers as they join in. And you'll be able to tell if they join in with a microphone. They'll have a little microphone icon. The vast majority of students don't come in with a microphone, in my experience. So they will have little headsets on them or they'll have nothing if they don't have any access to a microphone. Um, if Even if they don't have access to a microphone, they can use the public chat down here so they can type questions right here. And they can type those questions in there and you can see them in the public chat. They can respond to each other. You can respond to them in there also. Um, and they can all hear you. It's important that they hear you. Um, again, if they're having trouble, they can just dial in with their phone number or with this phone number. Um, and that is their conference pin and they should be able to get in. Now, one of the most important features of all of this is the ability to share your screen. So if I want to share a screen, say, hey, I want to share this screen, and um, I can pick any screen I want. I'm going to pick uh, an application window. So you can either share your entire screen. I have two monitors. That's why I have two screens. Um, if you don't, which a lot of time I don't, I don't always have two monitors when I'm, when I'm running this. I just happen to have them right now. Um, you can click an application window. You can say, hey, I want to share a Word document with those students, or which I like in stats. A lot of times they're asking me questions, and I can click on a Word document, and I can share it. Let me click share. And then you'll be able to see it on this screen, and then I can go type, I can respond to them, and so on. So I like that, that I can share that screen with them or share that application window with them. And then I can type and say, oh, okay, so you want to know, you know for example, uh, standard deviation, you know, et cetera. And I can type in here, you know, equals s for a sample, oop, sample, et cetera. So a lot of times because um, we're not doing things that are as calculation heavy, you can use that. Of course, you could also use the equation editor in Word. So if you don't have access to a document camera, you can actually do a lot. A matter of fact, a lot of times when I'm doing statistics um, question and answer sessions, I do not have a document camera. I'm just working in here. And if I want to um, show that I do an equation, I have math type. So um, you could probably get a free trial for math type right now, um, considering the the current crisis, I bet you that they're running a special or doing uh, access for 30 days for free. But I can use math type in there and I can type equations and do that kind of thing. It's not perfect. It's not ideal. It's not handwritten, but it still allows you to answer questions and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's not like me. I have a lot of things going on my computer right now. So um, no problem. All right. So 
then if you do have an external document camera, which I do, that's another screen you can share. So I can say, hey, I want to stop sharing that screen or I want to share a different screen. So I'm going to click on this and it stops sharing my screen share. And then I can say, I want to share a different application window. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I have a document camera that's been bought for Christmas a couple years ago, and it's turned out to be a better investment than even he realized. Um, when he bought it for me, he was so excited to give it to me for Christmas. Um, so this is nice because as math instructors, of course, we're used to writing on sheets of paper and having this rather economical document camera um, has allowed me to be able to, I can write on this. Um, there's a little bit of a lag time between when my hand went up there and when you can see it, um, but still it's better than nothing. And so they can see that camera and they can see its applications and I could write on this paper and show them things. But again, there's a lag. So just keep that in mind. There's a lag for any window that you're sharing. It has to do with um, your Wi-Fi and your computer and the processing time and all of that. But nevertheless, it's possible to do so. So my t my go-tos are either using this document camera or using just Word. I, honestly, I've used Word more than anything. And I'm just typing in there. I'm typing answers to questions and that kind of thing. Of course, you can also show them Desmos. Um, you could show them a Desmos window on um, a Google Chrome tab because that was another option. Let me go back to stop sharing. And then if I go in here, yeah, it's saying my screen share has ended. Thank you. Um, then one of the other options was a Chrome tab, which of course, if Desmos is something you're using in your computer, you could say, I, I don't have a Chrome tab or just Des Desmos tab open. But if I did, it would sh I would be able to choose it. I'd be able to select Desmos and show them that Desmos. Um, if you have TI Smart View, you could show them that. If you had Maple, you could show them that and so on. So if you have access to other programs, you can show them that. And again, the camera I'm using is an IPVO camera. So IPVO is the company that makes it IPVO. So it's a nice little purchase. Um, again, I got it for Christmas, so it was awesome. And I really enjoyed it. Um, well, actually, I didn't enjoy it so much on Christmas Day, but I have come to enjoy it a lot. He was right. It was a good present for me. All right, so um, one other feature about this is the recording. So when you record, I believe that um, JetNet automatically saves the recording. So just make sure that students know they can be recorded, um, they could be viewed by others, um, just so that they're not freaked out by that and they know that, et cetera. I'm trying to think what else is in here that's interesting. I, honestly, I really like it. It's really easy. I'm able to type to students. So a lot of times when they first join, especially their first time, they won't have joined with sound. And so I can type to them in here and say, hey, Joe Smith, you know, can you hear me? And they can um, figure out that they can hear me or cannot. So you can type to each other in the chat window. And at least you can get that communication going that way. Um, you can have students get a little overpowering. I had one student that um, constantly had her son playing video games in the background, and that was really frustrating. So, um, oh, yeah, I know. Go away. Sorry, I'm just trying to get that to get out of there. Um, so you can mute students. So, I'm not exactly, I think I can mute myself. Yeah, mute user. You can mute all of the class. You can, um, because you have that ability as the instructor. So you can mute all the users. You can mute all the users except the presenter, which is you. Um, you can clear all status, you can do a lot of other things, right? So you have some power in that room as you are the moderator and instructor in the room. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, let me know your other questions about it. It's really nice and easy, um, and students will all be working with it for the first time, for the most part, just like you. So I'm sure they'll be understanding of any issues. I will warn you that if you have your... Um, if you share your screen and you have yourself in that screen, it can get a little mirror inside a mirror. Um, I, I can't make it work right now because I have two web cameras attached and it doesn't know what I want to do, but um, you can make it a little weird at first. I've done that several times where I'm sharing a picture that's a me sharing my screen, which is a me sharing my picture, which is a me sharing my screen. So it becomes a little like feedback loop, which gets a little weird. So I try to switch it to um, Word or whatever quickly. All right. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.